Hi there, welcome to my tutorial on how to create eyes with Anime Studio. First thing you may notice is that I have pre-drawn all the layers you'll need. So in the Grand Blue Peter traditional thing, here's one I made earlier. Starting with the right eye, just a plain white leaf shaped vector layer. Yeah, a little bit scruffy, don't worry about that. Next, the iris is just a circle, which is the color I've chosen for my character's eyes. Pupil goes on top of that, black circle. I create them as a separate layers in case I want to vary the size of the pupil. I can't do that if I create the iris and pupil as a single layer. At the moment it looks very flat, so I'm going to add reflections. Again, a separate layer so that I can move the iris and pupil without moving the reflections, since this is more realistic. You may notice the iris is a little over the top of the eye there. That's because I haven't added the eyelid yet, so there it is. That's all right. However, watch what happens if I try to move the iris and pupil around. There. You see that? Since those layers are above the eye shape layer, there was an overlap, and they appear outside the socket. So, how do we solve this problem? Well, first of all, we need to group these layers together. So, we're going to create a new layer. Now, this can be done with a group layer, but I'm going to use a bone layer for reasons that will become obvious in later tutorials when we get into rigging characters. We place the right eye, iris, Pupil and reflection inside the bone layer. Next, open the properties of the bone layer, select the masking tab, and choose Hide All. Now, let's try moving the iris and pupil again. Better, definitely better, but the sharp eye amongst you will have noticed that we still have a problem. Our iris is still appearing above the line, that is the eyelash. That's because Anime Studio includes the whole layer, including the edge, into the shape of the mask. So what we need is another layer to go above the iris and pupil to cover this. So we'll use this weird shape looking thing here that aligned up with the bottom eyelash earlier. Once we plunk that into the group layer, as you can see, the iris is no longer appearing above the bottom eyelash. So, let's try again. Now you see, we can move around the eye socket freely without appearing outside of it. Pretty good. Huh? Now we have our eye. The next step is to make it blink. So for this, we're going to select the right eyelid layer. Make sure that you have your actions when they're open. And we're going to create a new action for the right eyelid. And we'll call that right blink. Select translate point tool. Make sure all the points are selected. Then click one of those points and set the key for that start that'll set the keyframe for the start of the action. And roll forward in your timeline about five frames. Again make sure you have all the points selected and click one to set an end keyframe that exactly matches the opening keyframe. Next, roll back to frame 2 and let's translate the points down about two thirds over the eye. The basic eye blink is about five frames and we tend to open our eyes in a blink ever so slightly slower than we close. So we'll find two frames down, three frames up tends to work best. Next, go forward one more frame. Don't worry if your eye opens a little, that's because of the end keyframe we set earlier. Then close the eye. And let the final keyframe open it from there. 
as you can see, we have a blink eye action. Pretty cool, huh? Now, before you do anything else, go back to your main timeline and insert the blink into the animation of frame one using the insert reference button on your actions panel. Great, so now what? Well, one eye is good if you're making a cyclops, but two eyes are better, so let's do all the same with the left eye, which will give us a great opportunity for a recap. All the same layers as before. Now we need to create a new bone layer. Select the left eye, left iris, left pupil, and reflection, and place them inside that layer. Open the bone layer properties, select masking, hide all, OK. Let's not forget to add our funny shaped bottom eyelid thing. Now for the eyelid. Create a new action called left link. Select all the points in the layer. Make sure you have the translate point tool selected. And click a point to set the opening keyframe. And roll forward five frames. Click a point to set the end keyframe. And roll back to frame two. Now this is why I said insert a reference for the right eye blink earlier. We can now use the right eye as a guide as we translate these points for the left eye blink. At frame two, it should look very sleepy. Ah, uh, we can be tired. Now forward one frame. And close the eye. Like so. See, now we have two eyes blinking. Next, remember to insert that reference on the main timeline, a frame one, so that it's added to your animation. Like so. Now I want to add some eye movement to the animation, so I'm going to select the right iris, right pupil, left iris, and left pupil. And using the translate layer tool, first I'll set the star keyframe by clicking them. Now roll them forward to the end of the blink. Frame 6, I'm going to move them over to one side. Like he's just seen something on the left there. Now you see, he, he blinks when he turns his eyes, which generally speaking people do, so it's quite realistic.
Now, just to reinforce how easy it is to duplicate this, now anywhere in the animation, I'm going to do that again. There, select from the left eyelid. I'll insert a left blink. And the same thing for the right, at the same point in the timeline. See, now we have another blink, much quicker than the first time. And I think I'll have them look the other way this time. So that's in the right iris and right pupil, as well as the left iris and pupil, set in the star keyframe. And translating those layers all the way to the right, to the length of the blink. And there we have it. Actually, let's see it without all that crap all over it. Perfect. Blink and eyes. Well, that's it, guys. I hope this has proved helpful for you. Although I am using Anime Studio 6, the same principles apply to later versions, so you should still be able to use it. Feel free to use the comments to give any feedback and ask any questions. And subscribe to me and I promise I'll add some videos in the coming weeks. Bye for now and happy animating.